all right so this is going to be um the crash course on conclusion writing uh to help you start to master the eoc short answer question um so why are conclusions important conclusions are important for scientists to compare their experimental data to their original hypothesis so it's super important that once you develop your hypothesis or whatever you think is going to happen in the experiment you then compare your data to what you originally thought was going to happen to see if your experiment worked. So just some review of some keywords. Go ahead, write these definitions down in your notes packet. Um, but our hypothesis is just that educated guess made by the scientist about what they think will happen in the experiment. Um, independent variable is what the experimenter changes. Dependent variable is what we're going to measure. Control group is going to be our group that does not get the independent variable. We just use them as a comparison. Um, a lot of times it's just going to be the group that's normal, that doesn't get what we're trying to test. The experimental group is the group that does get the independent variable. So they're like the group we're experimenting on. Think of it like that. Once you're able to break down those parts of the experiment, you can then compare our two groups to see if our hypothesis was correct. Okay, so you have an example problem in your packet that we're going to walk through uh, to come up with an exemplar for conclusion writing so that you can use it as your guide when you're writing your future conclusions. So a group of students hypothesized that increasing the amount of fertilizer given to plants will decrease the plant growth. In container A, they gave the plants water only. In container B, they gave the plants water with fertilizer added to it, as we see in the table. Over a period of five days, they measured the height of the plants in centimeters. Their results are shown in the table below. So we have our results shown right here of our two containers. So before we write our conclusion, let's go ahead and break down the parts of an experiment just to make sure that we're refreshed on that vocab. So from the experiment, identify our independent variable. So looking at that, that's what we're changing, our independent variable. So if we look back at our experiment, the thing that we are changing is the amount of fertilizer. We are changing the amount of fertilizer given the plants. Dependent variable is what we are measuring. So the one thing in our table that we are measuring is the plant growth or the height in centimeters if we want to get more specific. Hypothesis. So key thing to look for the hypothesis is just search for that keyword in our sample experiment. So if we look back at our sample experiment, it's written right there in the first sentence. If the amount of fertilizer is increased, the plant growth will decrease. We've got our cause and our effect, or our, what we're changing and what we're measuring. And we're making a guess or an educated guess about what we think is gonna happen. We think, or these students think, if fertilizer is increased, plant growth will decrease. Our control group, our group that does not get our independent variable, is container A, because they are given water only. Our experimental group, container B, because they are given the independent variable. All right, now we're gonna look at our data. Over the five days, what happened to the height of the plant group that was given only water? So take a look at that table. We'll see on day one and compare that to day five, because we want the general trend. So from day one to day five, the container with water only, the group of plants who were only given water increased from 2.0 centimeters to 2.6 centimeters over the five days. Okay, so we've got our sentence down about our control group. So let's take a look at our experimental group now. What happened in the height of the plants? Plant group that was given water plus fertilizer. Take a look at that table. And you will see that the plants that were given water or who are given the fertilizer increased from 2.0 centimeters to 3.8 centimeters over the five days. So key thing that we want to note here is that the group that was given fertilizer increased way more than the group that was given only water. So even though they both increased, the group that was given fertilizer increased more. So if we take a look at what they originally thought was going to happen, if the amount of fertilizer increased, the plant growth will decrease and compare that to what happened in our data, we will see that their hypothesis was incorrect. So we've got all of our parts written down here. Now we've got to use some structure to write our conclusion. So we're going to break it up into five different parts. 
The H part is restating the hypothesis, just putting it into our own words. A, we're going to add a sentence about whether or not their hypothesis was correct. So in this case, it was not. C, we're going to claim why the hypothesis was correct or incorrect. E, we're going to then provide our evidence, and we're going to um, use at least two data points from the table and compare our control group and our experimental group. So if we see right over here, we actually already have done our E part. We just need to put it in the conclusion. And then M, the meaning. So why is the experiment important in the first place? We're going to hit three parts. We're going to talk about why the ex results are important to the real world. What's one way the experiment could have improved the experiment? And what future data could be gathered? So our example, our conclusion for this um, experiment, our H is going to be students hypothesize that increase in the fertilizer will decrease the plant growth. We're just restating their hypothesis. Then, like we already found in the data, their hypothesis was incorrect. We're adding our A sentence there. Next part, C, we're going to make a claim about the trends of the independent dependent variable. So according to the table, as fertilizer increased, plant growth increased. We saw that in, when we were looking at the data. Now we got to provide our evidence. So our evidence is the huge chunk that we need to provide. So we're going to take our two sentences from the first page and put them in our evidence section. And then we're going to finish it up with just kind of a summary. Overall, the group of plants with fertilizer resulted in a larger increase in plant height. So go ahead, copy that down in the evidence section. And then we have our meaning, the huge part of why is this data even important. This data is important to people like gardeners and farmers because they can add fertilizer to increase the growth of their plants. Then our improvement, to improve the experiment, we could have tested different levels of fertilizer on a larger sample size. Increasing sample size will always increase the um, how valid our experiment is. And then what can we do in the future? We can continue to run more trials on a larger sample of plants. Go ahead and make sure you get this exemplar down in your notes. And then the next part you're going to do is read the con sample conclusion um, in the packet. And you are going to walk through and grade each part of that conclusion using the rubric provided for each part. Be sure to provide feedback about why you're grading each sentence the way that you are. And you can go ahead and use the exemplar we just completed to help you in grading the next example. When you are finished, go ahead and see me for the next instruction or if you are confused about any parts of this conclusion.